Radical. Welcome to Flea Market Stories, documenting one man's journey into the world of flea marketing. Going to talk about the entire weekend here. There's not a whole lot to talk about. And this is really, really a sad weekend. And not at all what I expected. You see, the weekend before this was Christmas weekend. And Sunday, they were closed. Saturday, before that, they closed at 12. And I did not go there. Because it was incredibly, incredibly freaking cold. Uh, they were only open from not, you know, well, I get there at nine. Only open until 12. And pretty sure that hardly no one's going to be there in, you know, 10 degrees below. Uh, I was, I was so, I mean, I'm not, no, no. I'm not putting my car through that stress. Uh, I'm sure like incredibly cold weather is not good for a car. And not good for me. So I I didn't. I think I made the right choice. And I texted, you know, the, the Russian girl, the Russian woman. And I said, are you going tomorrow? And she said, no. And I said, no, there you go. We're not going. And most people are probably not going to go. So you had the one weekend of lost sales just because I didn't go there. And you had the other, the past weekend, which I thought wrongly it would be a huge bounce back weekend i thought well you know it's after christmas you got a lot of these uh, people that have money from christmas kids that have been given money from christmas so of course it's going to be a big weekend not so much because of another holiday called new year's now saturday i think would have been a lot better new year's eve if it did not rain it rained quite a bit that morning but after a certain amount of time, it cleared up. But by that time, it was just too late. People had made a decision not to go out there. What's even worse is uh, I found out the day after that that I had backed into my booth. I found out that some of the rain had, I think, basically, you know, collected. It was, I had my trunk open. It was dipping off the trunk and gotten into one of my Sanyo TVs. Nice TV too. I mean, I didn't. I don't pay a whole lot for them, but still, it's a shame if I can't get this TV back to working. Any tips on maybe drying out a TV? I'm thinking about just putting it in front of like a huge fan. Or is it pretty much gone if some of the water got into one of the vents on the back? You know. So let me know if you've ever like saved a TV or if it's just pretty much gone. I have other TVs. I think I even have another Sanyo, but. It's just a shame on that particular uh, television. So there's that. And there's the fact that Saturday, you saw that this video was from the Saturday. Saturday, I had a beautiful booth set up. I had the spread. I even had the second table to the left filled with Funko Pops. But uh, it didn't work. It did not work. Now... Did I set up the day after that? The same deal with the Funkos? I I believe I did. I believe both days I set up. But that was from the Saturday. Didn't sell, I mean, anything except literally $5 worth of CDs to a guy. Oh, and by the way, did I forget to mention that not only on Christmas Eve did they close at 12, but one of the reasons I didn't sell that much was... I, and I didn't know this, they decided to close at 12 also. So I get there at around 9, and then I found this out when I get there. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I find this out after I set everything up, the TVs, the Xboxes, I'm like, what's even the fucking point? There's no point in me even setting up. I would have just, like, not even brought out the TVs. I would have just set up just the games and uh, some magazines and comics. And maybe, maybe like one TV and one Xbox. That's all I would have set up. Knowing that you really can't do much with that amount of time. And also, it 
it was raining. Um, but it did start to clear up, but it didn't matter because I was telling people and they didn't know other than the announcements, they popped in the announcements. So uh, we'll be closing at 12 o'clock. We'll, we'll be locking the gates. Now here's an interesting thing about that. I was talking to a couple different people and some of the vendors actually stay past 12. Cause I said, you've stayed past 12 when they close down the office and they say, yeah, they only close down the office. Okay. They only close down the office doesn't make any sense then because they close all the gates except one way out that maybe not everyone knows how to get out. There's like a little secret passageway out, but they close all the gates. The office is closed. When people see the gates start to lock, they are going to start leaving probably. I mean, technically you could stay there, but there's, I don't think there's much of a reason, especially on that day. But I was thinking I had the time. And I was actually going to hatch a plot with the Russian woman to actually stay. I said, listen, you know, maybe we could stay past and we're going to be a couple of the only ones here. So if there's people left, we might get some sales from just stragglers. And it seemed like she was in agreement. It seemed like she was. Then I went back to my booth and at around 11.05, 11.10, guess what I saw? I guess I, I, I saw... I saw her packing up her stuff. I'm thinking, betrayer, betrayal. You know, what's that one guy? You know, the one dude years ago, um, the guy he doesn't upload to YouTube, right? But that's his big thing. Like he would yell betrayer, betrayer, something like that. I forget his, uh, is it Pinky, Stinky, Slinky? I forget what his name was. But, um, so, uh, but, I mean, I don't blame her because, okay, I don't, I don't blame her. She doesn't want to be, like, alone there with just, like, not that many people. And I said, like, I would follow her on the way out, you know, out that um, side passageway. But she had the right idea. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do it, too. So I started putting all my stuff up. It was just a terrible, terrible day. It was. And I was just shocked. The fact that it was only a $5 day. And that was New Year's Eve. Let's switch over to New Year's Day. And let's see if I can maybe get a mini outro of U2's New Year's Day. How about that? That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. We'll do that at the end. This was a slightly, slightly better day. Right out of the gate, uh, one of my buddies came by. I'm not going to go into detail um, which vendor he is. But he's a real good guy. Uh, you you might have, I'm not even going to go into it, but because uh, I try to keep track and explain who all these people are, but he's a good fella, good fella. He um came by with his wife. They were at separate tables, and he bought. I had a bin of just random things, two for a buck, and uh, they bought two dollars worth of stuff there. Throughout the day, I sold three PS4 games, five dollars each. They're untested. I'll tell you right now, maybe because it's because of Game Pass, no one bought any Xbox One games. The PS4 is far and away, I'll say, more popular than the Xbox One. That's what I've just uh, determined, which is pretty obvious. But to any of you out there that question it, no, the PS4 is way more popular than the Xbox One. I Let's see here. 15 okay yeah so three of those adding up to $15 so we're $17 and then I sold Lego Star Wars for 10 bucks to a guy that just wanted something uh, for his kid I do good on the Lego Xbox 360 games I do good on FIFA there's certain games I always do pretty good on uh, when people get the 360s from me a lot of time it's you know it's on an offline console they worry about their kids getting online and they just want something offline that is safe for their kids and simple for the kids to use. So a lot of my Xbox 360 sells because of that. I sold one Funko Pop. I did. Green. Oh, 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 green giant. So I sold one of them, which I was happy about. I have. I have them sealed in plastic, all with basically a Mookie Betts. You saw the baseball man. I don't think I'm selling the Mookie Betts on his own. So I link that with each Funko Pop and I sell the triple packs, which is the double pack 
and the Mookie Betts for 20 and then I sell the singles with the Mookie Betts for 15 And then when people ask about the pricing, I say, hey, you know, individually they're like 12 bucks at Walmart, so, you know, you're getting a deal. And I sold one comic to one of the kids that comes by and plays regularly. Uh, I sold one $1 comic. Now, when did I leave on this day? I just, I hope the mic still comes in. I switch sides. Um, when I leave, maybe, maybe two, maybe like a little bit after two. There's one more sale, actually, which is a stack of comics that I got online and I sold to uh, this one guy at a shop. I went there, then he didn't come back to the table, then I went back to make the sale ultimately to him. And if I didn't mention... I had uh, gotten Funko Pops from a uh, guy at work I work with, and I was going to do like a consignment deal. I sold that for twenty, so you know he gave me five from that, which is a good idea, you know, consignment because basically it's not stuff that you bought, but you're trying to sell it, and then you get a little bit off of it, so it's a good deal all around. And he was surprised I sold the uh, the Green Giant, but. uh one big reason I was bringing those Funko Pops was because there was a vendor and he mentioned he wanted the Hello Kitty and I think the Marvel vs. Capcom. But bad timing because he told me he bought, basically he bought out a guy that had a Funko Pop store there. So number one, okay, he's got money, but number two, he tells me he only pays like $5 each for them. So it's good to know he has money to spend but it's bad for the selling the Funko Pops to him. Oh, well, I don't have any time period where I have to sell these Funko Pops. This guy doesn't have any specific time period. He's just happy to get, you know, some money from it. So, okay, not a big deal. I didn't sell the Legos. I was surprised I didn't sell the Legos because there's 1,800 individual Legos in there, including some Lego men, a uh, little Lego motorcycle. Yeah, I was surprised I didn't sell it for 40 I think 40 bucks is a very fair price uh, for that. Uh, what else? What else? Um, here's other things I could talk about on uh, that day. But ultimately, I just was, and I felt this way before, but it really kind of hit home. I just decided, I made a decision that I'm going to mostly try to sell what I already have there in the immediate future. And I'm going to stress that I am for the moment, I am really getting off of goodwill and I'm not going there to buy a lot of uh, different gaming stuff. I'm not because I, I, I've honestly been burned a little bit from goodwill. It's just a heartbreaker on the white Xbox, you know, getting that maybe a internet ban and a lot of the controllers I got in one instance, they did not work. Or you may get a console and it doesn't have a hard drive. So then you'll actually have to go online and buy a $20 knockoff hard drive for an Xbox 360. So if I do get on there in the future, it would only be because, number one, I'm making a good bit on a weekend. And number two, I'm going to be very careful about what I choose to get on Goodwill. I mean, I've gotten burned a couple times. I got this one Xbox, and everything looked great. Came with some games and whatnot. I got excited because it came with a good bit of games, but the Xbox itself, it was an original Xbox 360, and it was missing the eject button. But with the pictures, the way the lighting was, you know, I didn't, I'm not going to say they hit it. They hit it, but you couldn't tell that well with the way the lighting was. Um, I think I'm going to maybe invest heavily into the first generation Xbox 360. And you might say, Rick, why are you doing that? The red rings, the red rings, people are going to get pissed. Well, I'm going to start, believe it or not, even though it's a simple flea market booth, I'm going to start doing warranties, six month warranties. And how I'm going to do it is I'm going to write down the serial number, keep it in the record. And this one was kind of shocked. Like you offer warranties. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do warranties on these. And I figure, they're easy to get. They're easy to acquire. Yeah, I might get uh, an Xbox 360 for you know, 20, 25 bucks, maybe less or whatnot. Because when people look for those on Goodwill, they don't want that one. 
they don't want that one because red rings and it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. But most of the people I'm selling it to is people getting it just because they simply want a simple console to play and they want it for the kids. So uh, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to get other, the E's or the S, but I'm mostly going to focus on that one because it's going to be honestly a lot more profitable for me. And the original Xbox, it's, you know, it's not that bad of a looking console. Also, one big reason I'm investing in that one is when you get it, you can actually see if it has a hard drive or not. A lot of these times, they do not have pictures and they might have the console playing, but they don't show that it has a hard drive there or not. So even if you get one and it has a hard drive, I mean, even if you get one and you get a good deal on it, it might not have a hard drive. So, so what do you think there? Do you think I'm smart or you think I'm like just crazy for trying to invest in the original 360 right now? Also, I can sense in the next couple of years, prices for 360 stuff and PS3 stuff will start to in, inch up a bit and go up. Uh, we might have what's going on with the PlayStation 2 right now. Because, right, you know, PlayStation 2 a couple years ago was easy to get a PlayStation 2. Now the prices have skyrocketed on a PlayStation 2. It's hard, at least online, to get a PlayStation 2, even though it's, it sounds crazy because there's so many of them. Meanwhile, other things like the PS1 and the Wii, kind of easier to go, you know, get those. That's another console I might uh, start picking up because it's really cheap. Um, but ultimately... This year, one of my resolutions when it comes to the flea marketing is to go with what I got. You know, quit listening to people that come by and they want certain things. Go with what you got and you got to move. And instead of investing in things that you think you will flip and make a good bit of money on, uh, just focus on bringing in a lot of things that you necessarily just, you know, don't care about getting a lot of money for but you just have to move and get rid of things that, you know, you get on in lots. Uh, two quick things I'll finish off on. This is what I was trying to remember. And then what I, there was that long pause. I still have a situation to where there's one guy that has not come back, which is the nerdy, nerdy kid. And I have two things from him. And I don't know if his expectation is for me to sell both of these things, but I'm going to have to basically tell him that, Hey, you know, I have been trying to push and move these things and show them to people, but they're just kind of stingy and they don't want to pay 40 for this and they don't want to pay 25 for this. But what I can do is bring them here whenever you're here and you can feel free to try to sell them yourself. And I also tell him, you know, I feel uncomfortable selling things for other people. You know, because you never know things could happen. Maybe someone comes by and they steal it. And then I would, you know, I'd feel terrible. And I would, you know, basically be in a situation where I'd have to pay you 40 bucks. And I don't want to be in that situation. So I'm going to have to explain to him that I'm going to give them that stuff back. Also, I need a nice way to let people down. When they come by the table, they pick something up. And they do the, you know, would you take five for this deal? Would you take, because there's nothing wrong with that, you know, just asking, hey, would you take five for this? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's not intense haggling at that point. But then if you say, well, you know, um, I decline, I will not. If someone asks, will you take this for that? And I say, well, no, I will not then that seems negative. And I need to really find a great response to this. I need to. And I was thinking of if it's a, if it's a DVD and they say, we take five for this and maybe it's six, I'll say no. But what I'll do is I have some loose DVDs without cases. And if you get that, if you buy that, I'll let you have one of these DVDs on top of that. Something like that, where you offer something to someone. And so you might say, well, that kind of emboldens them every time to come there to try to uh, whittle you down on the price. 
I want to find a way where that I can stay solid on the price and not have to make an excuse for that. You see, uh, last other Sunday, somebody came by, and even though it wasn't that great of a sales day, I'm not I'm not hurting to get sales there. You see, this is all basically flea marketing is mostly an experiment for me. It's just kind of been a hobby, right? I mean, yeah, I like making money at it, but the money I make there is not really necessary money. Like it's extra fun money, you see? So someone might come by and think, well, you know, this guy, of course he'll take this for that. Uh, someone asks uh, on a game, will you take such and such? I, without thinking, said, well, I mean, I'm selling that for someone else, so I cannot. And they seem to understand it because you're selling it for someone else. Maybe I could do that on specific items, but then someone could call me out and say like, okay, what are you selling here for someone else? And what are you selling that's yours? And the things that maybe I can move on and wiggle on, I could say, well, you know, all those magazines are mine, but most everything else here is other people's. And I can basically explain that I, I'm basically a seller of things for other people's and then I get profit on the things I sell. And they give me instructions and I have a book here and I write down the prices basically of everything, you know, and that way it's not you and it's not them. There's a third party that's not there. That's the best thing I could think of, you know, to let people down easy. Yeah. I mean, if some of you can think of a better solution. Please let me know, because that's like the one thing I want to just kind of nail because I'm trying to perfect this whole flea marketing thing top, bottom, sideways. Okay. Thanks guys. Take care. Thanks for listening.